Thank you very much for this kind invitation. I'm very honored to be here today to talk about the gut microbiota of an overlooked population, the Colombian population. Uh, this work takes place at Vidarium, the Nutrition, Health, and Wellness Research Center of Grupo Nutresa. We have seen throughout this session how important is the gut microbiota and the human microbiota in general for uh, our own metabolism, including digestion, the synthesis of essential vitamins, processing of xenobiotics, regulation of fat storage, the maintenance and stimulation of the uh, gut epithelium, these microorganisms, mainly bacteria, confer uh, resistance to pathogens and importantly educate our immune system, among other functions. A few years ago, the Human Microbiome Project demonstrated that the, the gut microbiota is different from that of other parts of our body. So in the upper graph, you see how different it is well, from the oral microbiota, or the urogenital microbiota, or that of the skin. And in the bottom panel, you see uh, interpopulation, interindividual variation in the taxonomy of these groups. But basically, in the case of stool, the gut microbiota, it is composed of two main phyla, as mentioned before, the firmicutes and the bacteroidetes. Interest in the gut microbiota has increased in recent years, and the reason is that these, mainly bacteria, uh, have been involved in important human cases of uh, health and disease. That's the case of obesity. The unexpected relationship between the gut microbiota and obesity was demonstrated like a decade ago by Dr. Gordon's lab uh, using elegant experiments like this one in which fecal pellets of uh, white type lean animals and genetically obese mice were transplanted to germ free mice. And the germ free mice were then raised under exactly the same conditions, even the same diet, and the only difference was the colonization of their guts by different bacteria, and they developed the phenotype of their donors. So, this kind of result strongly suggests there is a functional association between the gut microbiota and the phenotype, the obese phenotype. Other studies demonstrate that the composition, the taxonomic composition of the gut microbiota changes in uh, obese and lean subjects, in both animals and humans. Uh, for instance, uh, in the two examples here, there is an increase in the proportion of the firmicutes and a reduction in the proportion of bacteroidetes in obese animals and humans uh, compared to lean. In the case of humans below, you have obese people to the left with more firmicutes and less bacteroidetes and lean to the right. However, other studies failed to find such pattern. Uh, in the upper right, you see basically no change in the proportion of bacteroidetes with increasing body mass index, one of our preferred measures to assess obesity. And in the lower right, you see uh, another study showing the exact opposite pattern to that found by Ruth Lay in humans. Basically, uh, in this study, firmicutes tend to be less abundant and bacteroidetes more abundant in obese than lean people. And if you make a thorough revision of the literature, you would probably conclude that directional changes in the composition of the gut microbiota according to BMI is not concluding. Indeed, we don't know exactly What's the typical gut microbiota of lean and obese subjects? And furthermore, we have a biased picture of our human microbiome, since most studies have focused on, on Americans and Europeans. But we do know there are other factors that influence the composition of the gut microbiota, including geography, but also diet and lifestyle and host genetics, as previously shown. In the case of geography, a few years ago, some studies demonstrated that the gut microbiota is strongly dependent on the, uh, the geographic origin of the host population. In these two graphs, you have principal correspondence analysis. This is a multivariate analysis. And each point represents the summary, the multivariate projection of the composition of the gut microbiota, and colors represent the origin of the population. And to the left, you see how different is the gut microbiota of Americans compared to more traditional human groups, including inhabitants of rural Malawi 
and also Native Americans from Venezuela, uh, in red, Wahibo population, and in green, a recently uncontacted group of Yanomami from the Amazonas. And to the right, basically, a similar picture showing how different is the gut microbiota composition of Americans, Europeans, and two groups of hunter-gatherers from Africa, the Hatsa and the Baca. Well, this spectacular result is not totally unexpected, right? Comparisons are being made between human groups with very, very different lifestyles. Basically, traditional lifestyle, like hunter-gatherers, and more westernized <laughs> lifestyle, like Americans and Europeans. But the question that revolves around in my lab is what happens in populations that are on the way to westernization? And Latin American uh, countries, Latin American populations, are good to answer that question. Indeed, Latin American countries experienced during the last decade an important economic growth that unfortunately has been accompanied by uh, increases in the rates of non-communicable diseases, including obesity and diabetes. This is one of the most recent global pictures of obesity and diabetes, and as you, can, as you see here, uh, countries such as Mexico or Chile or Paraguay are in real troubles uh, with these two diseases, but that's also true in countries like Colombia, Venezuela, or Brazil. In the case of Colombia, uh, the two most serious studies, the National Service of the Nutritional Situation, demonstrated that in the short period between 2005 and 2010, there was an increase in the rates of excess weight, obesity plus uh, overweight, of about 5% in just those five years. And we expect for 2015, the rate to be still higher. So with this in mind, this relationship between gut microbiota and uh, obesity, and these rates of obesity, a couple of years ago at Vidarium, we uh, engaged in the first attempt to characterize the gut microbiota of Colombians. So for this, we recruited 30 subjects, uh, 16 men and 14 women, lean, overweight, and obese and made DNA extraction from feces. Basically, we amplified the V1, V2, and V3 hypervariable RNA region and made a 454 sequencing. We obtained more than half a million reads and analyzed them with the SHINE pipeline. And as in the uh, Human Microbiome Project's uh, results, we found that the gut microbiota of Colombians is basically made of firmicutes and bacteroidetes with important variation between um, individuals. In blue, blue bars represent the proportion of bacteroidetes and red bars the proportion of firmicutes. And as you see some, well, you can't see, but actually uh, you have some individuals with a strong proportion of firmicutes and other individuals with a more balanced proportion between firmicutes and bacteroidetes. We then regressed the abundance of firmicutes and bacteroidetes with the body mass index. And as you see, uh, well, uh, in the upper left, you see the, a negative correlation between the, the abundance of firmicutes and body mass index. So firmicutes tend to get significantly lost in obese people in the red background compared to the uh, lean people in the green background. In bacteroidetes, we observe no tendency, probably due to low statistical power. We then went into the details of the taxonomy of these operational taxonomic units, OTUs, and found that among the most uh, prevalent OTUs, five of them belonging to Ruminococcaceae, Clostridials, Acromancia, Dialyser, Nussel Spira, tend to get lost in obese compared to lean people. And interestingly, uh, many of these bacteria are related with degradation of complex polysaccharides, including in fibers and mucins. Now, next, we put these results in a broader context and compare the gut microbiota composition of Colombians with that of other populations. We compare them with uh, Americans, Europeans, Japanese, and South Koreans. Again, this is a PicoA analysis, a multivariate analysis, uh, using the unweighted unifrac measure of diversity. And basically, as you see here, there's a significant clustering uh, of the gut microbiotas by the origin, the geographic origin of the population. However, if you do similar analysis, but this time using BMI, 
categories uh, as a grouping factor, basically you see that lean, overweight, and obese people are interspersed in this, in this graph. Well, you probably agree with me that a study of 30 subjects is not like a big study, right? So for this reason, last year, we engaged in a bigger project at Vidarium in which we recruited more individuals, 459 men and women, again, lean, overweight, and obese, in five different cities of Colombia. These are the main urban centers of Colombia. So some of these cities, well, the population, the sum of the population of these five cities make up to 40% of the total Colombian population. Some of them are located on the Los Andes Cordillera, like our capital, Bogota, but also two inner cities, Medellin and Bucaramanga. Another two cities are located nearby the Colombian coast, the north, the uh, Caribbean coast, and to the west, the Pacific coast. But this cities also uh, vary in terms not only of climatic conditions of the number, number of inhabitants, but also we know they vary in terms of diet and even in the, uh, you know, the ancestry. So the Colombian population is a mestizo population, and as you see there in this graph, uh, to the north there is more African ancestry, in the center more European ancestry, and to the south more Native American ancestry. So we have good reasons to think a priori that there might be a change in the gut microbiota influenced by different variables. So we measure many of these variables. Again, we amplify, we obtain DNA from feces. This time we amplify the V4 hypervariable region, applied a dual index sequencing strategy using the Illumina MySeq technology, made a very rigorous analysis pipeline based on Mother and Shime and, and other in-house scripts obtained many reads, around 15 million reads, and these are unpublished and brand new results we obtained for, for this meeting last week. And, well, it's difficult to see here, but actually there seems to be a clustering around the main cities that we sampled using, again, PicoA analysis, this time using the Jacquard similarity coefficient. I hadn't time to finish the analysis using the Unifrac measure, but uh, this is a significant clustering. We are now trying to understand what's going on here, which are the main factors uh, responsible of such a pattern. Is it diet? Is it host genetics? Is it metabolites? This is uh, uh, a work you know, that we are doing now. However, if you make a similar analysis, but this time using the BMI categories, it seems nothing happens. So in this population, it seems that the city, the origin, the geographic origin of the population seems to be a more important clustering factor than BMI. So um, we need to, this, these are previous uh, results, we need to, you know, confirm this in, in further analysis. And that's it. Let me finish by acknowledging all the participants of the studies, the funding agencies, especially to Grupo Nutresa, the participant institutions, the sequencing and computing facilities, and the research team, my colleagues and students. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Escobar, for this very interesting results. You presented very nicely about the geographic differences. Questions? One, one interesting question for, to me would be, is there any evidence for migrant studies when you go from one area to the other that this has an impact on gut microbiota? You know the migrant studies, for instance, for cancer incidents where, uh, you know, yeah. within one or two generations uh, the, the, the cancer distribution of the host land is more or less uh, that's a very good exactly. question. So we, is that done somewhere? Uh, no, actually, but I'm afraid that Colombians are very philopatric and we stay basically on the same cities. Mm -hmm. This is like interchanges, perhaps in Bogota, the capital, that's possible, but we don't have analyzed that yet. Yeah, that's a very good question. But as, you know, people coming from the United States and being uh, to, to Colombia for some time. Wouldn't that uh, be an interesting... They were not something that I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But so Wouldn't that be an interesting topic to uh, certainly. look yeah. at? Okay. <laughs> certainly. Mm. Thank you.